Investigators say it is one of the biggest threats to our children and it's also growing. Predators looking to exploit them online and through apps on their phones. Today in the first of a three-part series, we're giving you a closer look at who these accused predators are and we take you inside the worst kind of cases. So Brandy's here this morning, and this is really important information for parents, Brandy. It is, because you're spot on. You know, it's growing, it's happening more and more often, and I know it's not maybe the type of story that you want your kids to be sitting in the room and watching with you this morning, so kind of a warning for you, because it is graphic. And some of these things are hard to hear, but it's incredibly important. You know, I sat down with the new head of the FBI in Seattle yesterday, and he was talking about how he was surprised when he came here, how many of these child exploitation cases that they have. So this morning, we want to take you into the minds of these predators, who truly come from all walks of life. While many do start by lurking online, they probably live closer to your family than you think. It starts with a few keystrokes, trolling through the internet for their darkest fantasies. But behind each username is a real person looking for a child to meet in real life. Did you realize how much demand there was for this? No, I had no idea. Please get on the ground right now. Get on the ground. Get on the ground, get on the ground right now. No problem. I just couldn't believe what's what's out there. Sergeant Carlos Rodriguez with the Washington State Patrol has helped arrest more than 60 suspected child predators through an undercover operation called Net Nanny. Almost all accused of trying to buy sex with young children. Attempted rape of a child first degree and attempted commercial sexual abuse of a minor. 49-year-old Eric Jacobson, a father of two from Enumclaw, is among those arrested in the operation. Accused of trying to buy sex with 8 and 11-year-old girls. He maintained his innocence at sentencing last week as Sergeant Rodriguez sat in the courtroom. I choose to put my fate in the hands of 12 unknown people because of my belief in my innocence. Unfortunately, these jurors uh, saw differently and I stand here today having been found guilty of the charges that I still profess my innocence of. Do you have people who just can't understand why, why people think it's wrong? There are absolutely people out there that think it's, it's normal. Will you sign here? Just put this in there. Just money. Okay. Randolph Krantz from Fall City is also among those who Sergeant Rodriguez and his team have arrested. He's accused of driving to this Snohomish County home, expecting to meet a mother and her child. I knew this was a setup. He's now charged with attempted child rape and commercial sex abuse of a minor. Okay, sir, have a seat. There's a good chance that one or more of the Operation Net Nanny suspects lives close to your family. They come from more than 30 cities across Washington. This touches everywhere. It's easy to say, well, Seattle's a big city, and so Seattle's probably got that kind of a problem. No, we've made arrests in Afraid of Washington, Cooley City, Toledo, Washington, Spokane. Seattle Police Captain Mike Edwards heads up an Internet Crimes Against Children task force, one of more than 60 nationwide. Recently, a school driver was arrested uh, showing up in the school bus. Setting bail at $50,000. They're usually within a short drive or short distance away from the location where they're going to have sex. Standard range is 26 to 34 months. Cecilia Gregson, a King County senior deputy prosecutor, works alongside Captain Edwards. Her job is to prosecute adults who exploit children, whether it's online or in real life. I am asking the court to impose a 38-month prison sentence. The defendant is not a first-time offender. He has criminal history. Most of my defendants, I would say, have family, um, they have jobs, they would be considered middle class. The people in their lives are completely dumbfounded that this had been going on under their nose. And some suspects she'll come across more than once. 50-year-old Todd Rickdahl had already served time for attempted child molestation when he was arrested earlier this month for, again, trying to meet a child for sex. There has to be fear. There has to be um, a consequence that if you get caught doing this or if you do harm to a child, you're going to be held accountable. But no matter how many suspects are arrested or put behind bars, there is no shortage of new cases. The first stop that we did, uh, we, we posted an ad. We had a, over 100 responses in less than 10 minutes. You could give me 50, 60, 70 people and there'd still be tons of work. And you have how many? I have two detectives and myself. 
it's absolutely disgusting. Coming up tomorrow at the same time, we're going to take you into the lives of those investigators who you just met and talk about really the emotional toll that this type of work can take on them. And what I think is really interesting, what I hope uh, you parents out there will take away from this, these investigators are parents as well. And really doing this job has changed the way a lot of them parent their own kids. And they're going to have some hopefully uh, useful advice for parents out there who are wondering, well, how do I protect my kids from not only this type of stuff, you know, where they're trying to meet children in person, but also a lot of this exploitation happens over the apps that kids have on their phones. They might end up sending someone who they think is maybe a cute boy, but it's actually a predator, a photo, and then they use that to extort them for a more graphic and more graphic things. So those are types of cases we're going to be discussing as well. I am embarrassed to admit I feel a little naive. I've heard of, of this being something that happens, and I always have associated it with being somewhere else, and that's a national thing, and it doesn't yeah. happen here, but you're really localizing it with your stories. Is it different here as far as how widespread it is compared to other regions? We have some of the highest rates of child exploitation here in the entire country. And that was something that hard to hear. You're right. You're always thinking like it's somewhere else. It's someone else. That's not going to happen to me. But we do have some of the highest rates of child exploitation. And uh, one of the reasons Captain Edwards says that they think that that's the case is uh, we're a huge tech hub here in Seattle. We have a lot of technology. So when we talk about cases like child pornography uh, and things like that, we do tend to unfortunately have more cases. So a downside to how far we've come uh, as a city in technology. But yeah, you know, in, in like it was so interesting to me for me to hear as they were talking about these specific cases where people were actually going to meet who they thought was a child who thankfully was an undercover detective where they're not coming from like the other part of the country or from from another country entirely there there were cases where a guy in the same apartment complex that the undercover operation was running just came from that same apartment complex to try to meet a child or went down the street or into a different neighborhood. These are people who are living in our towns and in our cities yeah. and who come across to everyone, even the people in their lives, as ordinary individuals. And that's that's the most frightening thing of all. That's is a, that they absolutely. could be, you know, next door to you. Yeah, and in fact, really quick, I, had, I got a, a message from the wife, uh, ex-wife of one of the suspects who we were featuring, saying she'd never had any idea until he was arrested, moved all the way across the country to get away from it. Thank oh you. No, gosh. You have no idea. Yeah. Well, we'll find out more tomorrow yep. as the series continues. Brandy, thank you.